Shalom. I want to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Ha Raka Kudash. Double honors goes out to the elder apostles, a great millstone, for teaching us this truth. And also want to acknowledge all the Akyam who are pushing this truth with sincerity. All right. So the Spirit <clears throat> has me in Numbers 12 and 1 starting out tonight or today. Um, and uh, really, it's really the spirit because I started watching another video I did in the past, and realized. And right when I hit play, it was I was going in on <laughs> numbers twelve. So it was just, it was just the spirit that you know I played an old video, and right when I went in on it, it was the middle of the video, and it was like I say going in on numbers twelve. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring it out. All right, this is um, verse twelve and one numbers. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. All right, so showing you that that Israel, you know, you can, you know, because IUIC they'll teach you that, you know, you can't be with the other nations, right? Like, and really, you shouldn't marry them, but. If that happens and you're Moses, you know, who is one of the greatest prophets, hey, so be it, you know. Um, but he was in a situation where, hey, he ended up getting married to an Ethiopian woman, you know. And, and the thing was, she was a heathen, but, you know, it, it was uh, it just showing you how, how much Yahweh, you know, you know, is offended when you when you come against his prophets. All right. Because as we read on in this story, well, I'm going to keep reading, you know, you really can't judge another man's servant, you know. Um, and uh, let, let's keep reading. But you know what? I got a precept in Exodus. Let me go see Exodus 2.21. You know, it's ideally you, you want an Israelite woman, but, you know, Yahweh has, has made the men of Israel so... Um, you know the apple of his eye so even if you have a woman you know you you definitely you, you still your children will still be blessed but if it's the other way around you know Yahweh did not do that for these women these Israelite women who have babies from the Edomites and the Moabites and the Ishmaelites and these Hamites these other nations hey your children are heathen you know and it's because you never took the time to learn the scriptures to know better you know, you now God cursed you, you see? So Yahweh has cursed these women when they marry into these other, um, you know, nations outside of Israel, all right? And it's a, it's a curse, you know? Because now your kids are heathen. They don't have the, the blessing that Israel does, you know? Because we're going by the seed of your father. So uh, we're, we're, I'm over here on uh, Exodus 2.21. And it says, and Moses was content to dwell with the man, and he gave Moses Zipporah his daughter. See? So, you know, and Moses was living in Canaan because it was after he had, uh, he killed the Egyptian, you know, and then he had to flee. So, you know, this was a unique circumstance, you know. So you, you brothers out there who are taking on heathen wives, as wives, these heathen women as wives, well, hey, you're not, you, you haven't been, uh, you know, exiled to a, a different land where, you know, you have Israelite women everywhere. So really for you, there's no excuse, you see. And I'm not making excuses for the prophet Moses, but apparently the Lord had pardoned, pardoned him for, uh, for taking on a heathen woman, you see. And that's not for us to, to, to decide, you know, just like, hey, it's ideal you should take an Israelite woman but hey Moses was in a situation in Midian where he, hey he he had a heathen woman you know so I'm gonna go back to numbers and we're barely at verse 2 oops I messed up numbers 12 verse 2 it says and they said hath Yahweh indeed spoken only by Moses hath he not spoken also by us and the Lord heard it. See, so Moses, Miriam and Aaron, they're talking shit about Moses because he had that Ethiopian woman who was a heathen, 
she was a non-Israelite. And they're over here saying, hey, hey, is, has the Lord only spoken by Moses? What about us? You know, we, you know, and uh, Yahweh heard that and he, he pissed him off, you see. So, so literally, you know, that shows you how, how serious Yahweh, um, you know, deals with his, his prophets. You don't want to come against his prophets. You don't want to talk shit about his prophets. That's why these people that come to the camp, hey, they're really cursing themselves, literally, you know. When they come up and act a fool and they, and they try to go against the truth that we're bringing out, hey, these people are cursing themselves, right? Just like Moses and Aaron, or I'm sorry, Miriam and Aaron, they cursed themselves in this situation. I'm going to keep reading. Um... It says, and the Lord heard it on the end of verse 2. He heard him, you know. Verse 3. Now Moses was a very meek, was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. Right? And that goes for the prophets. The prophets are, are one of the metaphors for the prophets is a tower, you know. Meaning you're above everybody because you're the top of that tower. All right? So let, let me go into this real quick, this word meek. Let's see what it says. It says, quiet, gentle, and easily imposed on, submissive. You see? And really, when it says meek, it means he was meek with this, the, the knowledge, meek with the truth. Like he was, he didn't, he, he was, uh, you know, he accepted it. You didn't have to bend his arm backwards for him to, to believe the truth and to understand the, the wisdom and the knowledge of the truth, right? That's meek. All right, so I'm going to go back to that verse. <clears throat> so you see, now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And Yahweh spake suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam, Come out ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And the three came out. See, so they were literally in the tabernacle, you know, meaning the place where they worshipped. It says, verse 5, and the Lord came down in a pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. So you see, and he came down in a pillar of the cloud, man, the chariot. He was in a chariot. Let's go to the precept. Um, go to Numbers 11, 25, and it says, And the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him and took, the, took of the spirit that was upon him, and gave it unto the seventy elders, and it came to pass that when the Spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. You see? So you're not supposed to cease from this. Once the Spirit's on you, the true prophet won't stop. You see? But guess what? This, this wisdom is ministered to us by the angels, right? The angels who are in the clouds, the chariots. Let's go back to Numbers 12. And now we're at... Uh, let me see. I'm going to underline that one. And he said, verse 6, And he said, Hear my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. You see? And really, Yahweh has done that with us, right? He's, he's made or his self known to us in a vision. Why? Because we've we can vision the the prophecy. We can see the the end. We can see Babylon America being bombarded with missiles, you know? And not only that, you know, the vision in a vision, hey, we've even seen the chariots, you know? Yahweh has shown us the chariots at camps and in and different different scenarios. I can tell you I never saw a so called UFO until I got in this truth. Now I've probably seen almost 10 you know 10 times you know that i've seen a, a chariot in this truth and i don't have no reason to lie to anybody about that you see um verse 7 it says my servant moses is not so who is faithful in all my house you see so he's separating moses is a prophet all right these, these other people that you know Literally, you don't you don't want to speak against the men who are pushing Yahweh's truth. All right, it's just the way he made it. It's not meant to be an arrogant uh, comment. It's not meant to be you know 
anything but that. But hey, Yahweh has men that he uses in this in this world and to to uh, to put forth his truth. All right, and his real truth. I'm not, I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about anything else. You know. So anyway, here we are at verse um, eight. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. Meaning, because there are dark sayings in this Bible that people can't understand, but because the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Rokakodash is working with the uh, the the Israelites, and, and you know more exclusively with the the elders of GMS. Who have given us this truth and knowledge and now guess what now we have been diligent and now this truth is dealing with us this the men who are who are out there pushing the the truth you know now the spirit is is on upon us you know we read it earlier you know about prophesying not, not ceasing you see so it says and a even apparently and not in dark speeches in verse 8 meaning in dark speeches hey we can see this this uh truth this knowledge we understand it it's not dark and and, and uh and um confusing to us no the spirit is working with this so we're able to break it down now you know when we never were able to you know in our in when we were brought up in in these uh you know false doctrines but now hey we look at this bible with new eyes because because the holy spirit is dealing with this and it's a beautiful beautiful thing you see so I'm going to keep reading. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Right? A similitude is a parable. So we can behold these parables. We can understand them. Right? And we can see them. When a brother breaks it down for, for another brother, you know, whether it's on a lesson or a video or a camp, you know, you, you, we're able to, it, it's, it's not a dark speech anymore. You know, we understand it. Wherefore, when we were not afraid to speak against my servant Moses, see, so that's, hey, Yahweh was telling them, hey, y'all were, you, like these people that come to the camp and come against us, they're not afraid to speak against us, but they should be, you know, and again, it's not, a, it's not about putting, you know, being an arrogant, making an arrogant comment, no, it's just because, you know, what makes us different is we're pushing this truth. So this truth, you don't want to come against it, you know. We're not entitled to go against this truth, you see. As the prophets, we're not, we're, it's not okay for us to go against the truth, you know. And teach lies or whatever it is, you know. In any way, anything we do, you know, it has to be in line with the truth. Otherwise, we're going off. And if you go off, then hey, that means the, the Lord, maybe he, he took the spirit from you. Or maybe he's not dealing with you anymore, you know. That's why you got to pray for the Spirit to stay on you. But anyway, he was pissed off because Moses and Aaron had the nerve to talk about Moses. I'm sorry, Miriam and Aaron had the nerve to talk about and <clears throat> put their nose in his business. You see, because he, he had that heathen woman. That's what this all started out with. So verse, um, verse 9, And the anger of Yahweh was kindled against them, and he departed. So Yahweh just... Hey, went up in a chariot, you know, and literally was like, he, he was out. Let's keep reading in verse 10. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. <laughs> so you see, Yahweh was so pissed off. Um, now all of a sudden, look what, what he did to her. He made her leprous. So let's let's just cause through the spirit I wanted to I I just looked it up right, um, yeah let's just go to Zipporah cause that's who the that's the Ethiopian woman and who who she appears to be like an Israelite you know, but this is what similarly what Miriam would have looked like, you know like this picture here I'm showing you, and, and this is just a painting right but you know. Um, just to give you a visual and then when he made her leprous because uh let's go to now look at miriam would have looked like the picture i just showed you similar to that a woman with dark skin but he made her leprous white as snow so she looked like this and, and she was uh you know like 
it was a, it's a curse to have this skin color. It's leprosy, according to the Bible. The Edomites are leprous, you see? They're literally, they have leprous skin, you know? And even some of the Israelites have it. Like, just like Miriam, she was an Israelite, but she had leprous skin. But this is what leprosy is, it's white skin. You know, so let's let's go back to that that verse. <clears throat> this is verse. I'm going to read verse ten again. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, so the chariot lifted up, departed, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous, white as snow. We we read, you know. And Aaron said unto Moses. Actually, you know what? Let me go to Deuteronomy 24 and 9. It says, Remember what Yahweh thy power did unto Miriam by the way after that ye were come forth out of Egypt. See, what did he do to Miriam? He gave her white skin, you know. Let's read verse 8. Take heed in the plague of leprosy that thou observe diligently and do according to all that the priest, the Levite, shall teach you as I commanded them, so ye shall observe to do. Remember what the Lord thy power did, what Yahweh thy power did unto Miriam, by the way, after that ye were come forth out of Egypt. So you see, he said, hey, don't, you don't want to be leprous. You know, that's actually a curse, white skin. You know, Edom, Esau, Edom is cursed, you know, having that, that, which is actually red skin, you know. But they, they, their skin does appear pale, in some cases, pasty white, you know. But it's actually a curse. And really what inspired me to do this lesson, I meant to bring it out in the beginning of the lesson. But it was because I have a beautiful daughter who's only seven, right? And she was playing with some Barbies, and she was holding up this... This Barbie, like white Edomite Barbie, and she said, oh, she's so beautiful, Dad. She's prettier than me. And honestly, my daughter's beautiful, you know, not just because she's my daughter. I get many, many, you know, compliments on her beauty because she's a pretty little girl. But, you know, I told her, I said, man, you are more, much more beautiful than that Barbie. I said, that Barbie actually has leprosy, you know. I told her that. And I actually taught her, you know, I showed her. So she has an understanding on uh, leprosy. More than more so than some of these uh, two thirds and these uh, these heathen, you know. So anyway, back to uh, so, but that's what inspired this story, you know. And then uh, let me see, go back to Numbers, and we're at verse eleven. Oops. Okay, we'll just we're actually at verse twelve, chapter twelve, verse eleven. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my lord. I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us wherein we have done foolishly and wherein we have sinned. All right, because you're not supposed to uh, uh, judge another man's servant, you know, especially if it's a prophet who, like Moses, was a prophet. You know, Yahweh is dealing with the prophets. You know, these two thirds and these heathen, hey, they have, they don't, you know what I mean? You're better off uh, what, hanging a millstone around your neck. Let's get that. A great millstone. Let's go to it real quick. You, you don't want to come against the prophets, you know. You curse yourself when you do that. Luke uh, 17, 2 says, It were better for him that... A, this is Yahweh Shai speaking. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. You see, and the little ones are the prophets, are the, are the, are the, they're referred to, you know, as, as, um, you know, little ones because we're young in this truth, you know. Myself, I'm only five years old in this truth. When Yahweh Shai was on the scene, you know, hey, the, the disciples and the apostles, they, you know, they were just learning, you know, they were little in the truth. They were young and they were born again, right? That's where you get the term born again. And so when you're born again, you cannot come back as an adult. No, you, you have to start out as a baby, you see? 
So that's why it says the little ones. And you're better off hanging, let me read it again. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea than he should offend one of these little ones. So you're better off drowning yourself with a rock, um, big rock around your neck, dragging you down in the ocean or in the sea than to, than to offend Yahweh's little ones, you know, which are his prophets who are pushing his words. All right, so let's go back to Numbers 12 and, and 11. Well, we're at 12, but basically Aaron was pleading with Moses saying, Hey, you know, we're so sorry for sinning upon you. You're being foolish, you know. And that's the act of repentance. You know, he, 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 he recognized the transgression. And now, you know, he's he's apologizing. It says, and then he says, and he's speaking of Miriam, right? It's verse 12. Let her not be as one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed when he cometh out of his mother's womb. So he said, hey, don't let her be like an Edomite, basically is what he's saying right here. You know, who's dead, right? Who are, Edomites are dead to the truth. Esau is dead to the truth. Esau came out of his mother's womb and his flesh was half consumed. You know, let's get it. That's why they described his flesh, but they didn't describe Jacob's flesh in this scripture when they were born because Jacob looked like everybody else. He looked like the rest of the Israelites, dark skin, you know. Esau was different. And he came out looking red because he, he had that pasty white skin that is transparent. The blood, you could see through the skin. You know, even when, you know, so-called white people are out in the streets, their, their skin turns red because they're in the sun you know and you just i mean they get red red you know but at the same time if they're not sunburned their skin some of them are so pasty they look well, they look white you see it's, this is genesis 25 25 i'm gonna start at 24 and when her days to be delivered were fulfilled behold there were twins in her womb and the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. So that's why in verse, um, was it 12 or 11? Let me see. Yeah, 12. He says, let her not be as one of the dead of whom the flesh is half consumed when he cometh out of the mother's womb. He, he's dealing with the Edomites. You know, they're dead. Dead to the truth. They have no repentance, you know. It says, And Moses cried unto Yahweh, saying, Heal her now, O thy power, I beseech thee. And the Lord said unto Moses, If her father had spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut out of the camp seven days, and after that let her be received again. See? So let's go to this. So Job... Uh, 30 and 10. Oops. 30 and 10. And say, Oh, this is a joke. They abhor me, mean they hate me. They flee far from me and they spare not and spit in my face. So that's the, that's the, the, the uh, precept, you know, dealing with spitting in the face. That's a very, that's a disrespectful thing, you know, especially if a woman's father spits in her face. Hey, she, must, she really fucked up, you know? And she should be shut out the camp for seven days. Let's see. It says, Let her not be as one of the dead whom the flesh is half consumed when he cometh out of his mother's womb. And Moses cried unto Yahweh, saying, Heal her now, O thy power, I beseech thee. And the Lord said unto Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, she should not be ashamed. Should she not be ashamed seven days, let her be shut out of the camp seven days, and after that, let her be received again. So let's go to another precept in Deuteronomy 25 and 9. Then shall his brother's wife come unto him in the presence of the elders, and loose his shoe from off his foot, and spit in his face, and shall answer and say, So shall it be done unto that man that will not build up his brother's house. 
see. So spitting in your if somebody if if they get their faces spit on, hey man, you you've offended severely. You see, and obviously that just makes sense in general. You know. Let's go to numbers. 15 and Miriam was shut out from the camp seven days and the people journeyed not till Miriam was brought in again and afterward the people removed from Hazaroth and pitched in the wilderness of Paran all right so really you know just want to go in on that because it's it's a shameful thing for Israel to be leprous you know like Miriam was you know, so, you know, we, we when you look like the heathen, it's a shameful thing. And really, our natural look, if we go back into our first captivity, you know, in, in Egypt, we were dark skinned people. You know, there were no, you know, there wasn't so much as a confusion of face or a speckled bird like it is now. Right. Because of the curses we've been with heathen women and now our children look like the heathen even we look like the heathen you know because we we should be dark skinned like you know looking like so-called negroes you know that's how israel that's the natural look the natural branch but because of our scattered in every nation and because you know our men take on heathen women even Moses took on heathen women, you know, but I'm just saying now now you have Israel looking like all the nations. All right, let me just grab this real quick. But, you know, in, in Miriam's case, she was cursed because of her evil speaking, right? And, and you know what? Let me, uh, another verse to, to support the fact that, you know, the heathen women, the Israelite men, you know, ideally you don't want to do that, but you you know, let's read it. Psalms 2 and 8, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, thou shalt dash them into pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. See? So the heathen are our inheritance, you know, and in the kingdom, they're, they're going to be our slaves. But, you know, Ethiopian woman that Zipporah that um, Moses was dealing with, hey, she was, you know, she was a heathen woman, but she was inherited because Moses was in a sense exiled from Egypt because he couldn't, he didn't want to get persecuted for killing the Egyptian who you know who was do who was being evil toward his his fellow Israelites and it was the Israelites it was the two thirds who was like oh shit you know they're they're the ones who were basically gonna throw him under the bus you know that's why he had to flee to the land of Midian and then he ended up getting with the heathen woman but in that situation Moses is a prophet so you you know Miriam and Aaron didn't have no no say in the matter and it was a wicked thing when they're speaking against the prophet Moses. All right. So now I'm going to go to Daniel. Just because going in more on, you know, what we were just reading, uh, Daniel 9 and 7. And like I said, it's a, it's a, uh, <clears throat> it's a curse and it's a, uh, to look like the heathen, it's, it's a curse, you see. And it's a it's shameful. Daniel 9 and 7. O, o Yahweh, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces as at this day to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off through all the countries where thou hast driven them because they're trespassed that they have trespassed against thee. All right. And really, I'm going off the subject because I, I was going in on Miriam's leprosy and showing you how white skin is leprosy. But it's just through the spirit that, you know, now I'm bringing out the confusion of face. Because a confusion of face means we look like these other nations, you know. Um, 
verse 8. O Yahweh, to us belongeth the con confusion of face, to our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. So it's it's a curse and it's a shame to look like these heathen nations, especially to look like an Edomite, you know. It's literally a curse. Um, really quick, one more. Well, actually, two more. But yeah, at the end of the day, hey, you know, the true beauty lies within the dark skin, you know, the natural branch. You know, the true... Matter of fact, when we get the kingdom, we, we are going to be dark-skinned men. You know, we're not going to have leprosy in the kingdom. Uh, let's see, Jeremiah. Let me go to Jeremiah. 12 and 9. It says, Mine heritage, dealing with Israel, Mine heritage is unto me as a speckled bird, the birds round about that are against her, come ye, assemble all the beasts of the field, come to devour. So it's that's a parable, like we read earlier, a dark speech. It's a parable. The speckled bird represents the heritage of the Israelites looking different. Speckled bird, you know, like, let me just, to get you an idea. Let's just go to a speckled bird. You see how the speckled bird has so many different it's speckles, different things. That's how the Israel, different colors, you know, and it's speckled. So it's talking, that's what we are as a nation. The heritage of Israel is a speckled bird, a confusion of face, you see. And like I say, it's a shameful thing to look like the heathen. We'll go to Hosea. But like I said, when we get the kingdom, we ain't, we're not going to look like the heathen. Seven and eight. <clears throat> this is just adding into what I'm talking about. Set Hosea 7, 8. Ephraim, which is northern kingdom, he hath mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. The strangers have devoured his strength, and he knoweth it not. Yeah, gray hairs are here, and there are upon him... Yet he knoweth not. Because Israelites, they don't even know these things I'm saying right in this lesson. They don't understand that it's a shame to look like the heathen. If you're an Israelite and you look like the heathen, you know, you, you, you know, that's part of your curse. That's part of your, you know, because you were scattered among all nations. Not only did you take on the false doctrines, but now you even, Yahweh cursed you to you even look like the heathen. <laughs> you see? Especially, like I said, the worst thing you could look like is is is, uh, is that wicked one. And who's the wicked one? Esau, Edom. You know, that's a curse. Because like we always teach in Great Millstone, hey, there are Israelites that look like every nation. All right? And there are Israelites that look like Esau. You know? And that cake not turned goes into, like, if you're cooking a pancake and you don't turn it, you're going to have one light, light side and you're going to have one dark side. And we talked about the speckled bird. That's all dark sayings and metaphors for our people looking like these different shades of every shade of, you know, even, like I say, even, even so-called white people, you know. <coughs> Israelites even look like so-called white people or light-skinned, you know, cake not turned. And Ephraim is northern kingdom, which would have been the Latin tribes. You know, they, they're the ones who first really became the confusion of face in captivity because, hey, they took on, you know, they literally mingled with the heathen. And it says it mixed himself among the people in verse 8. You know, Ephraim is a cake not turned, you see. So, you know, again, it was kind of a double lesson because I started out with leprosy. But just to show you that, you know, it's a curse to look like these heathen nations, especially to have so-called white skin, you know. So that's what it is, you know, it's a curse. So, but with that, I want to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Ha, Raka, Kadash. Double honors goes out to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching us this truth. Um... And also want to acknowledge all the Akiyam pushing this truth with sincerity, alright? Shalom to the elect.